Welcome to uh, another episode of Don't Shit on the Bus. This week, we've got Joey Phillips, who works at the Forum in Los Angeles, California. He's worked there for a little while, but he's got a ton of knowledge just about what goes on in a venue. And I have a lot to learn in this area because I just know the touring side of things. I've never worked at a local venue other than maybe like popping in and being their photographer for the night. But, you know, I see security because I got to deal with them. And, yeah, I talked to the stage manager, but I, I don't know everything that goes on in the offices there. And I didn't even really know there were offices till recently, but Joey's here. We're not going to do an intro because th- we're actually recording this the day before it comes out. So Joey, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> You've been doing, this is the stuff you know real well. You have nothing to be nervous about. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a good conversation. It's exciting. I'm yeah. glad yeah. I could like kind of talk about a little bit different subject that's very much tied into touring and lots of different aspects of touring as well. So that's cool. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy Saturday night. This is how we hang out on Saturday nights. We uh, do podcasts. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like reflecting back into the pandemic times where it was like you could chill on a Saturday night and not feel like you're missing out on anything. So this Dude, is pretty cool. <laughs> I remember when I was first living in LA like a year and a half ago and my roommate had somebody over who was in the entertainment industry or whatever. And I was getting ready on Friday night to like work. I was going to work out and then work. And it was like 9 PM. He's like, is this how you stay productive? And I was like, huh. <laughs> never thought about it, but yeah, I just, uh, do the things that I feel like doing and the day of the week doesn't really matter. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> is it a show day or not a show day? That's pretty much it. I'm sure that's what it is for you. Recovery day. Recovery day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, for everybody other than me, this is probably your first time meeting or knowing Joey, and that's okay. So we're going to teach you a little bit about him, or we call it qualifying him, as corny as that sounds, because you got to know why you got to listen to Joey, because I've talked to him. He's awesome. But first, I want to just say as an intro, Joey works at the Forum, which in LA is a pretty big venue. Uh, Actually, relative to other arenas, it's kind of small capacity-wise. Is that correct? It's a little small capacity-wise, but we are one of the largest music venues in America because we don't do any sports. So we're not a multi-purpose building. We're a music venue. So we have max capacity is 17,500. Oh, that's way bigger than I thought. I thought it was like (laughs) 10,000. Well, that, that's 360 in the round GA floor. Uh, on average, we sell uh, at like the 180 lines, usually about 13 to 1500. And he's saying 360, 180 to translate that for you means like a full circular stage. So like the artist is in the middle and people are all around and 180 means it's like half. We'll sell, yeah, cell lines from the stage. So 180 degrees off the front of the stage are their cell lines. And that's how you have to. So this goes into everything we'll talk about. But when it comes to designing a show, yeah, when it comes to designing a show, a big part of the production aspect is how many tickets are available. And yeah. that has to be the very first thing that's figured out to go on sale and announce. So, you know, a big thing is a lot of times that's the very first part. You design it, you figure out stage placement, you find the cell lines, and then you then know how many tickets are available and you can start scaling ticket prices and going from there. Yeah, so this venue, not only is it a big venue, but it's a pretty like it's a pretty famous venue in LA. Like a lot of artists that could play larger caps at 17,000 will still play there and they'll do like multiple nights because it's the forum. It's like, yeah. a, it's got a lot of clout. And yeah. so it's a, it's a pretty good venue to work for. Yeah. Yeah. It's a historical venue. We were opened in 64. Oh wow. 1964. So a really cool thing that we have backstage. If anybody that's listening has ever been, it's one of my favorite parts of the forum is the tunnel wall has the name of every artist that's ever played since the opening of the, of the building. And so it's really nice. You get acts that come in that are playing arena sized venues and not to say that at that level, acts aren't excited, but when they come to the forum, they're very excited and it's a lot of energy and kind of one of those situations. Like if, if this building could talk, it would have lost stories. Yeah, no, that, and I've seen that wall. It's the loading wall. So it's where everybody brings their semi trucks down. You have to walk through it if you're playing at the forum and it's crazy. Cause you'll look on the wall and it'll say like queen, like 10 times in a row or it'll be yeah. like, you yeah. know, and that's because they played or does it have like their year next to them or something? I forget yeah, what it says. It's all chronological order, which is okay. the other cool part. Cause you'll see like, ZZ Top, Tom Petty, you know, and it's just like who that that month of of music at that venue, like, oh, my God, could you imagine? Yeah, you just hide out in the catering room and hop out for the shows (laughs) at night. You get a pretty good, uh, pretty good month. All right, cool. So now that we know where you work, what do you do at the forum? I, I know you're the event manager, but 
What does that mean? Yeah, so I'm the event manager. Um, my job really is to be like the conduit between the tour and the venue. The tours, they're all designed to fit in trucks and move down the road and come back and, and fit in multiple different buildings. So all the different aspects of the tour come through uh, my department and I distribute all the information to all the departments within the building so that the tour only really has to talk to one person. It's not a bunch of confusion and I could oversee everything uh, from you know a really high vantage point, big picture of what's going on with the show, everything from door times, VIP meet and greets, um, you know, media, where they're checking in, how they're getting in the building, their media rules, making sure all the security knows, passes, credential boards, all the good stuff. So everything top to bottom, I have, I kind of work along every department with every department in the building. So definitely kind of a big picture job, having a lot of skill or not a lot of knowledge of different skills. Yeah. And I think that that is one of the reasons why, you know, we have him on here, not just to talk about being an event manager, but Joey is going to explain to us everything that goes on in a venue and who does it. And well, it, it's going to be a good episode. Like, I'm not going to spill anything. I don't know if I could. I don't know enough yet. But I wanted to also say for the people who are maybe more familiar with touring, which is most people who listen to this podcast, is there a job in the touring world that your job is most similar to at all? Or could you relate it to something? Yeah, I would say I'm more along the lines of uh, the tour manager for the building. So uh, whereas the tour manager every day is dealing with a different venue, I'm dealing with a different, I have the same venue and the same four walls, and then I'm dealing with a different tour and making that tour fit into the building and getting all their special requests and all their needs. All their special asks for the dressing room, like they need like three couches that are two by fours (laughs) with only black uh, quilts on them. I don't know. You know, there's a whole, there's a whole department that takes care of that. That's like, that's the cool thing about working at a local venue. And granted, the forum is different because we are a music venue and I think, you know, oftentimes people think of arena size venue work as a sports job and kind of something that has more to do with basketball and hockey. So it is, I am in a little different position than most arenas around the country, but you could take it all the way down to theaters and and amphitheaters and uh, apply the same kind of job titles and job roles. Yeah. I, I, and I actually didn't even realize that till you said it, but I've been to those venues on tour. You'll play it like an ice arena and there's literally these puzzle like pieces. They lay over the floor and you're like, Whoa, there's ice underneath our concert floor. This is so weird. Yeah. And you know, us being a music venue, a lot of things that go into sports arenas are, you know, very large, tall buildings. If you've ever been to the forum, it's very small. It's, you know, we don't have layers of glass, between the 100 and 200 levels for different types of uh, suites or anything like that. So we did a renovation uh, a few years back that just, they did all things audio centric. So it was very much made to be a very uh, acoustically beautiful sounding building. So that adds to it as well when you're in a big arena and even down to backstage, right? When you're in an arena and you go into your locker room or into your dressing room, you're in a locker room with pipe and drape and, you know, the local sports broadcast on the TV. Whereas you come to the forum, you're sitting, you have a designated dressing room that's really beautifully built. Yeah. And for somebody who comes from the touring side, I know you've toured as well, but just pipe and drape for anybody who's never toured. It's literally these metal pipes with like blue or black drapes hanging from them and they put them around the walls of the like locker rooms to cover the lockers. Just feel gross. <laughs> it does not feel or look cool. And you're like, wow, I'm in this locker room for a day. When you go to the forum, you're literally feel like you're in somebody's home. And then they also have like a forum club, which is where people who are kind of like exclusive members pay to have access to. But when you're on a tour, you can kind of go in there. I don't know if you're supposed it's to. Actually, you can't pay. I'll I'll correct you on that. Okay, one. I'm it wrong. Is... Yeah, tell me. I don't want to I know you work in the forum. Invite only. Invite only. Invite only. There's no way invite to invite only into the forum club. Okay. I misspoke. I didn't know because I've only been there on tour and I go in, I'm like, you must have to pay for this. This is really <laughs> nice. But they have like food and they treat people really nice there. Yeah. The cool thing. So it's, it's nice that the forum is like, it's a music venue built for music and that's all you do with it. So it's really good at that. I didn't actually realize that until 
like I said just now, that other venues have to morph into these sports things and whatever. And so if you're an event or yeah, an event manager there, you'd have to work on the sports events as well. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like the, you do sports mostly, you know, and sports are great. I love sports, but really doing hockey for a season, it's like the same start time, the same end time and everything's the same, you know? So it's nice to do concerts. Yeah. It's nice to do concerts. And there's no concert in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and what you're saying is, although this, it might not be scalable to arenas because they have different, more things that they're doing in regards to not just the music industry, this, what we're going to talk about today is scalable to any level of venue. And you're going to see the same theme in this that you see in touring, where as the venue gets bigger and the jobs become more important, basically, you know, it's the same thing as tour, right? When you're in a small van, in a van or something like that, the tour manager might also be the sound guy. It might also be your lighting guy. But at a venue, it's, it's the same thing. You know, in a small venue, and, and you can talk about this, Joey, at a small venue, what does one person or two people usually do? Maybe you can say like the capacity and who's working there and then talk about how many jobs are at your venue, if that makes Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So for instance, the will turn here in Los Angeles, yeah. uh, you'll have a front of house manager and a back of house manager. That front of house manager is going to oversee all security, ushers, ticketing, box office, you know, ingress, egress, setup, all, all the operational uh, aspects of the show. And the back of house manager is going to be taking care of everything from the stage back, artists and production back. That's like their staff. Usually it's yeah. like two to three full time employees. You know, you have a dedicated box office person, a front of house person, a back of house person. And the capacity there is how much is the capacity there? You probably know. At the Wiltern, uh, you know, as many shows as I've seen there, I'm not sure. Cap check us, Connor. Already doing it. He's, he said, I'm already doing <laughs> it. Yeah. So then once he gets the capacity, we'll say, but the, the, you know, so going from that to the forum, you don't have to list everything, but how many people do you guys have working on each of those sides, like back house? Yeah. So the venue is kind of split into, um, two overarching departments, although we are one team, it's, uh, more or less the live side, which is going to be your booking VIP services, marketing, uh, social media goes along with that box office a little bit box office kind of straddles the line i'm like making my way down down the uh the the office hallway right now to see who i'm forgetting vip sales are uh uh sweet sales kind of stuff like ticket it's upgrades. more than two people <laughs> more than two people it looks like it's about like 12 or 15 almost yeah yeah and then on the op side you have a handful of different departments it's security operations those are the guys that are setting up and tearing down building the stage you have production which takes care we're a union house on our production side so uh local 33 is our in-house union so our production manager is kind of doing all the designing of the shows and making sure all the seats fit and then making sure that local 33 and the production crew that rolls in on tour are linked up and in total there's about I, I think on average about 18 of us or so oh wow uh full-time employees maybe a little bit more than that in total but as far as heads of departments and positions. And Connor got us that number. It's 2,344. So that goes into 18,000 about, you know, what, eight times, seven times? Yeah. So, or 17. So yeah. it's, the forms are quite a bit bigger. And, you know, amphitheaters really uh, are a great example of like maybe arena size where if you want to get away from like, I hate sports. And if I had to watch one sports game in my life, I would never do that job. <laughs> Go to an amphitheater because then you can only work a couple months out of the year. You work year around, but yeah, you're on a, a schedule there. So that's nice. No, that's great. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, and so before we get into what you've done, I just want to say that the, the purpose of this episode is we are hoping to kind of give people another avenue to get into the music world and let you know what you can do locally because we understand that going on tour might be a big jump and maybe you have some skills that you're trying to develop. And I know we've talked about it in past episodes, like go work for a local venue, go work for a church, work for a bar. Well, here are the jobs that actually exist at a venue. We're going to go in depth in them probably on the second episode of this, but in the first one, we'll kind of give you an overview of everything that you're going to do. And yeah, and, and Joey's going to teach us all about that. So Joey, <laughs> I thought the unique thing about you was, or there's a lot of them, but I mean, the, the cool thing about you is that not only have you toured, but you've also, you've been in a lot of different positions on tour and now you've worked at a venue. So that gives you kind of both the experience to kind of understand how everything connects. But could you talk about, you know, what you've done as far as touring goes? 
and then afterwards, venue-wise? Yeah, definitely. So out of college, I went to school um, and studied entertainment management in the middle of Missouri, oddly enough, and got a got a degree in in that, and um, which is nice and unique. I don't know how you know step out of college and go start your job of that is, but so I I started off taking an internship in Philly doing. Um, operations internship at the arena out there. And while I was out there, I worked as a stagehand as the, at the electric factory. Oh, cool. Good venue. Yeah. I really loved the venue side of stuff and got an opportunity to go to New York and work for vector management. And so stepped away from the day to day doing shows and into the office management side of things, worked on lots of big tours and lots of fun from the office side of things and really realized it wasn't as fulfilling as I thought it would be and that my true passion is in the live entertainment side. So from there, they put me on tour with a handful of their people as production assistant. And then I kind of started working with a gentleman named Matt Goss and I was his road manager. He had a weekly residency in Vegas. So I was living in LA and flying to Vegas every weekend. And he had an album release in the UK uh, through Decca Records. So um, you know, got to do that whole process from music videos to promo, all the stuff, uh, album release, touring, uh, toured with him all through the UK. Then from there, moved on and was a tour manager for a country act named Robert Ellis. Uh, great group of guys there. Um, did a van tour. And that's one of those situations. I was the driver. I was the merch sales. Nice. I was settling. I was, you know, sending in paperwork. I was doing it all. And that was a little bit kind of when I realized that maybe the mental toll of touring wasn't going to be set for me long term. And I was like, man, how do I do this? I love music and I really enjoy all of this. But how do I kind of transition maybe out of not being home so often and took a job touring for a DJ at that point. Cedric Gervais went on tour with him. So that was really nice. Worked for him and then uh, found a nonprofit uh, here in L.A., um, and did a production manager job, which was really kind of a, you know, step into it. And I kind of went back to my memories of working in Philly, where I was working at this big arena one day and then going to the small venue the next and working as a stagehand. And I kind of set my sights on wanting to do large arena size shows because um, they are just so magical at times. And um, I love theaters and I love going to smaller events as well. But when it came to working in my skill set, I figured you could always scale down and do smaller. So I wanted to learn the big picture, uh, the big events. Um, so I took a job out in Ontario at what's now called the Toyota Arena. And that's where I became the event manager. And then from there, I luckily got a job at the forum. I kind of, one of the situations where I applied for a job that I thought I was grossly unqualified for and um, it was for the production manager and I didn't get it, but one of the hiring managers really liked that I had. I went to school before entertainment management. I went to school for mechanical engineering and kind of oh, dropped cool. out of that uh, three years into it. But the head engineer for Madison Square Garden took to that very well. And he was like, hey, come be my ops guy, be my operations manager. Let's do this. And the rest is history. So I've been at the forum for five years now. We do tons of shows and you name it. I've probably had some kind of hand in making it making it happen at the forum for the last five years, along with a lot of other people, obviously. But it's a we have a lot of shows, so it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you for your hard work. I've been to the forum a few <laughs> times in the past five years, and it's a great venue. So whatever you I know you did something and I appreciate that. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, I know you, you obviously we're not gonna spend you know, we can't go super in depth on how you went from job to job because we've got other things to talk about. But I want to know, like, are you sending in uh, resumes for all these things or is it more like word of mouth? How did you go road manager, tour manager, production assistant, production manager? What was that journey like for you? Yeah, so I actually, you know, really lucked out with working in New York for Vector Management because I became really close with the managers there and they were able to bot me around to the tours. So I was their tour manager. They would put me on a tour and there's a lot of consistency there on the management side. And I'd interned with them and worked with them for, you know, a handful of months. So I already knew their systems and there's a really great way to get on the road and go on tour is that I knew the calendar systems. I knew the, you know, everything that we used on tour because I was the guy on the management side, filling all that into iCloud and everywhere else. So it was a really good and smooth transition um, into that. And it really 
uh, let me get a lot of gigs that way, which is really good. Well, it doesn't, I mean, I know you said it was luck, but it doesn't sound very lucky. It sounds like you worked really, I mean, not that you were unlucky, but it sounds yeah. like you worked really hard. You did a good job in front of people that mattered. And when they asked you to do something else, you were like open to doing it. And that kind of allows you to move forward. You know, you weren't like, nah, I don't want to do that. And you, you found your direction. So I, I think that's cool. And you went to school, badass. Not a lot of people have gone to school in this industry and then that I know, at least uh, touring and such. Yeah, you know, something that I learned from all that, which is really good to take away when it comes to touring is like, I learned what I didn't like a lot. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of jobs that I, I did. Like I was booking for a venue in my college, uh, in my college town. And man, I am not a fan of booking. And I learned that <laughs> early and I'm so glad I did. So I'm definitely the type of person that never says no to an opportunity. And at the end of the day, if it's like, that's not exactly what I want to do. I think a lot of people, when especially people coming out of school that think about touring and like, I want to go on tour, I want to be a tour manager. Well, it takes a lot of information to get to the level of being able to be a tour manager and a lot of experience. And there are some people that luck out and like get on tour and they're a tour manager and they latch on to an artist that blows up and boom, their life's set. Great. You know, they're on retainer forever. Um, and there's a lot of people that really part of touring is like, you have to know what you're doing. Everybody that's on the bus has a very important role and mm -hmm. um, you're not there to waste anybody else's time. So if you're going on tour and I don't want to like scare anybody offer of touring and putting yourself out there and learning new things but like imposter syndrome you know if you are like fake it till you make it yeah dude i could go on tour i could be your audio guy and you like step out and it's like clearly you're not an audio guy like you're done you know and it, touring yeah. is a small world whereas if you come into a venue and you could learn something and you could learn very specific tasks and see how other people do it and make those connections and and fail sometimes but at least you are learning in, in a spot and then you could take all that experience and go on tour with it. It's, it's like a great transition. Yeah. And there's not, you're not, you know, your inability to do something isn't directly affecting somebody else's job or life and making it difficult. You're, you're in the school, you're in the internship, yeah. you're in the place to learn. And like you said, you're not trying to scare anybody away. It's great to tour and learn on the road, but you know, I'm not going to tell somebody I can drive a bus and then get on a bus and then crash it. And you know, that's a very severe repercussion i'm just kind of using that as an, an as example but you know i've seen it people say they do audio and you go and you know the other bands aren't gonna not tell you that your audio sounded terrible they're gonna be like hey you sound really bad tonight you need to get a new audio guy and that is a thing that happens yeah it's definitely something to be aware of but like you said that doesn't mean don't try just be aware that you know don't push too hard and uh <laughs> give yourself a bad name all right cool well let's get into this so we kind of talked a little bit about the overview of what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about the venue, how it operates, what the goal of a venue is, because if you're like me or similar to me, you maybe didn't realize that for every person that tours, there's a counterpart that works at a venue that they communicate to. So we've talked about tour managing, production managing, guitar techs, everybody that tours, they have somebody at the venue that's coordinating this, that's getting it set up. So when they get there for that show day, you know, everything is where it needs to be and ready to go. Now, this first episode we have Joey on, we're going to mostly talk about the overview. That is like, what exists, what goes on in the venue world, how it operates, what's the goal of a venue, what do they do on non-show days, and then we're going to talk about the people that work there. So we're going to kind of list it off, give an overview, and then the second episode. So that's what we'll talk about in this episode. And then, but in the next episode, we'll go more in depth on what each of those jobs do. So we did this for touring at the beginning of the podcast, right? Talked about all the jobs that exist on tour, and then we did a specific episode for each job. Now look, we're not gonna do a specific episode for each job that works at a venue yet, but we're gonna talk with Joey about what they all do so you can understand maybe when you go work at a venue or maybe when you wanna to apply to work at a venue because let's say you wanna be a tour manager and you're like, all right, well first I'm gonna to try to be an assistant to an event manager or I'm gonna to try to you know, work at the box office and just understand how everything works all day. And those might be terrible examples and Joey can correct me later. It's but, not, trust me, <laughs> we if did you it. work at a, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, you're good, That's a you're great good. example. <laughs> you know, you work at those things, you can see how people talk, you can see how everything works throughout the day and that experience is great. And you know, like Joey said, he was going to school in the middle of Missouri. Yeah. And he was doing booking there. And so even if you live in a small town, even if you live in not LA, Nashville, Chicago, uh, New York or Toronto or something, you can still find work and find ways to learn. And that might lead to you getting on tour or finding a job in the music industry you really learn or you really like. The bottom line is, is you're going to be learning. And that is what we are all about. 
Okay, cool. So, Joey, the venue. We got to talk about the venue. It's where you work. What is, we, when we talked ahead of time, I had like to ask a lot of questions, so I knew what questions to ask. But you mentioned to me that you felt that the venue was kind of overlooked. And I admit, I am guilty of that. I just show up on tour and I'm like, oh, this is just a venue. This is just how stuff works. I'm a photographer. I'm no tour manager. I was oblivious and, you know, maybe I should have taken more interest and learned. But why is the venue so often overlooked? You know, we were talking earlier. I think people associate it with sports oftentimes. And a lot, I think people, when they glamorize touring, it's the idea of like, I'm the artist's right hand man. And that artist is relying on me where I'm uh, a step and a half away from the artist and I'm more facing uh, the general public and making sure that they're having a good time and safe. And, and uh, I think maybe that isn't what a lot of people, when, when they're setting their dreams and aspirations that they maybe they think differently about what that is and what you're contributing when you're when you're facing that side of things the public side of things instead of the artist side of things it's not as like maybe fun to tell stories about or it hasn't been you know movies haven't been made about it or something but it is just as important if not more important and we also talked to like a lot of touring positions are mirrored at the venue so you could start learning at a venue and go on tour or like you did you can you know, go on tour and then work at a venue. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the fun thing is like our rock stars are the production managers. It's like, there's a handful, <laughs> there's probably 10 guys that really do a lot of the really major tour at that production manager, a position. And it's just like, so fun when somebody rolls in and like you've worked with them on Kanye and then now they're here with somebody else. And you're just like, man, this is a good time. And it's like, it could be whoever the artist is. Like I get to work with this production manager. They're so good at their job. Yeah. They're so good at their job and you know, it makes a big difference. And it's just like anything with the live and entertainment industry. It's such a small family and it's such a small world that it's like fun to see people throughout the years at different positions and different levels. Sometimes you're at Coachella and you run into a stage manager. Sometimes you're at the Greek and they're doing a show there. And it's just like, I love all that. Oh man. I can relate to that with security, being a photographer, like running into, <laughs> running into security and other things like, oh, ball guy. Okay, cool. What's up? There was this yeah, one yeah. guy that was like, worked in San Diego Amphitheater and he was always so excited. And the one time I saw him in Irvin and I, re I don't remember his name, but I remember his energy. He'd be like, what's up, man? Aren't you excited for this show? He was like so genuinely excited to be security in the pit. And I was like, this dude fucking rules. So I know what you're talking about. Like some people just love their job and they're really good at it on every level. Yeah. That's awesome. One thing I like that you said that doesn't really fit in any category was you just said the venue is just four walls, but your venue's yeah. round. So we're one big circle. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, that goes along with like, what do you do for a show is like, whatever it takes. All we are is a standalone building. Do we need to set chairs for you? Do we need to have a GA floor? Do we need to have VIP? Do we need to build dressing rooms? Do we need to have red carpets? It's like, you know, this is, I've never, I mean, really thought of it this way, but maybe it's a really good way at satisfying an artistic urge that I'm not a painter. I'm not a musician. Uh, it's why I got into music is like, I love supporting people that are artists and that have that special kind of brain because I have a different kind of special kind of brain. And so if I could put mine to you so that you could perform on a stage to thousands of people and those people get to be happy and have the time of their life. And then that's just all the same to me. Yeah, no, that's a great way to look at it. Like just being a part of, you know, the cause. And I think it's cool on this podcast, not to shoot my own horn, but I really think it's cool to bring light to the people that do this because, you know, and I don't remember if this conversation was with you or somebody else, but so much goes on in a venue and on tour. And then all the fans see, all they're supposed to see is what happens on stage. But so much went into, into play just to get that hour and a half on stage with getting the artists, getting the catering, getting the crew, setting up the, st it's like insane. It's a lot. All right, cool. Yeah. So how does the venue operate? So a venue, whether you guys know this or not, it's really a, an office building when you get to this level, like they have office rooms in there that they work out of. What is the goal of a venue as a whole yeah uh have the show go is exactly as the production wants it to go anything they want whatever it needs you know there's when you look at tours these days especially arena size tours there's so many gags there's so many aspects it's like it's not enough that touring is a way that an artist is making money it's now sponsorship on touring and there's so much coordination because there's building sponsorship versus tour sponsorship conflicts of interest where can we put your product where can't we put your product oh i could have a private party but i can't 
show any of my branding unless I have four walls around me. Okay, well, let's build walls. Okay, where's the space to build those walls? On the terrace, what's the fire lanes? What's your capacity? What's your lighting? What kind of sound are you going to bring in? And that's all for just a VIP meet and greet that lasts 25 minutes, you know? Yeah, so no matter what's happening, not even the show, like so many people have to work together to make it happen. Right. And all that has to be communicated to the venue. And it's crazy to me to think about that the tour has to do this every single day. Every venue has to do this. You know, and sometimes you roll into venues where it's like a bunch of old school cats that don't want to do a whole lot of work and (laughs) you're like coming in like hot and heavy on tour. And it's just like, you go from that to a venue that's like willing to do what it takes to get it done and it's kind of what we like to hear at the forum is that it's like wow you guys really this has been a hassle this entire tour until we got here and you did it just perfect and it's like okay great that's our job that's great yeah you want you want to be like the band's favorite venue or the crew's favorite (laughs) venue you know you want to be that venue like people wake up at and they're like hell yeah we're at the forum let's go yeah and you know we talked a little bit about the history it's like kind of our job as employees of the venue to like make the venue live up to that experience. Like how crappy would it be if you spent your whole life dreaming of playing the forum and you show up and the event manager is like some dickhead that like doesn't want to give you the time of day. It's like, come on, like, this is their moment. Let them have it. This is the forum. You got to understand what's going on here. No, agreed. No, that's great. And I'm glad to hear that we got you on here and not somebody who's, you know, a dickhead. That would suck. <laughs> Because that's like kind of the theme of the podcast, right? There's people who in this industry who probably shouldn't still be in this industry. They should have done something else. And, you know, there are people who shit on the bus or are just rude. <laughs> and it exists in all areas of the music industry, a venue. And I've, I've experienced it touring and go to venues. And, you know, maybe sometimes it was my own fault. Maybe I was being maybe I was being the bad guy and I deserve what the venue did. But, you know, it, it's just nice yeah, a good venue can make a world of difference. It's the small things, you know, when you get off the bus and it's early morning and you had a late night, like all you want is your towels next to the shower so that you could shower without going and finding and tracking somebody down to get a damn towel. Like, yeah, towels, breakfast at the venue or something like yeah. hot coffee, like let's go. Like those things matter. Yeah, yeah. I will say if we're going to talk about breakfast and catering, there's has to be a big shout out to Forum Catering and Tada Catering because oh yeah, love Tada. Our food is super bomb, big plus. But they, they so they're Warp Tour catering. I, do you know that? Yeah, and Coachella and all that, all that. Well, I knew them because of Warp Tour. Like that was how we lived on the road, and then they blew up from there. And they do every venue now, I think. But every time I go to the Forum and I'm like working for uh like a festival or not a festival, like a what do you call them? I'm blanking on the name, like a, like a radio show. What a radio called? show. Yeah. Yeah. Like radio a radio show. show. Like, yeah. Like K rock acoustic Christmas. There's like an event. Yeah. I never get catering real. Like I get catering sometimes or I'll have to go to like a different catering area, but I'll always just peek in there. I'll be like, Hey guys. And they're like, Oh, come eat. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Work to her. Like sign on for life. Thank exactly. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So obviously we kind of know what you do on show days or we don't really know the specifics, but we know that your goal is to make the show happen. However, what takes place outside the show days for like all these jobs? Like what are you guys doing in your office all day? Like you go to work, there's no show there. What are you doing? Yeah, lots of emails, lots of meetings, um, lots of logistics planning, coordinating, cross-coordinating, uh, dealing with curveballs, dealing with, you know, politics from the city, uh, pulling permits, um, waiting, to, like anxiously waiting for a tour to decide what they want to do and you know they need to get a you know a lot of times for instance if you're the second show um on a tour you know they're gonna wait until the night before when they get their first show done to really be like oh this is what we need oh i never thought of that yeah it's a lot of you know you know tracking different expenses man you name it where we stay busy lots of walkthroughs you know a big part of our job is selling the building we have to you know keep it without having any uh, sports teams there. We have to keep that venue, you know, pretty busy um, with uh, concerts and family events and award shows and radio shows. So lots of walkthroughs, showing the building, cleaning the building, resetting the building, maintaining the building. For us, it's an old building. So wow. anything really, you know, it's 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 uh, 
It's like taking care of an old car. It's it, anything's bound to break at any given moment. Good example, you know, Kendrick Lamar's coming to play at the forum and we get a call that his dressing room is flooding because the bathroom right above it is been clogged up in, in the forum club. And so like we're in the middle of the forum club, yanking toilets, doing that kind of stuff. Who was there? Who flooded the bathroom? Who's about what office? Maybe what happened is that the water fountain wasn't working and somebody ran the sink tried to fill it up so they could get some water and then forgot to turn the sink off. And that's what happened. Yes. I solved 100%. it. Hire me. <laughs> You're hired. Yeah. Come, come, this guy come figured out uh, something that happens. <laughs> okay. Now that we know kind of what happens in venue, it's a very basic overview because there's so many things that go on here. But if I could sum it up, they have to make sure that a show happens and they have to make sure that a tour has advanced every single thing from VIP meet and greets to where the stage is going to everything that happens at a venue at a show is decided ahead of time. And there's people that work at the venue to do that. So there's different departments and these departments are split up into two things. We've got the facilities department and the live department. Let's talk about, let's start with the facilities department. What, what is that? What does that mean? So that's all that you could really think of that as what happens day of show. Mostly the facilities department is going to take up care of it. So production, box office, security, engineering, operations, event manager, parking, information, IT. Um, that's, you know, everything that's going into the show day of. Not to say that the other departments don't go put work into the show day of, but you have the live department, which is the other department. And we said, you know, booking, marketing, sponsorship, finance, premium seating, VIP, and artist relations. Um, they're doing a lot of the planning and the um, promotion of the show um, and kind of the tracking of the show uh, and everything that goes along with that. So there's, there's definitely two different worlds. It's the live department is kind of like the uh, record label and the facilities department is like the touring, the touring side. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Now that you've kind of told us a few of these jobs, like I know we're going to go into depth about what the heck a production uh, manager, is it production manager at the facilities department or is it just production? It's production manager. Yeah. Box office manager, security managers. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we know that these jobs exist. Let's go through a few of them and talk about how they work with the touring, you know, their counterpart in the touring world. So let's start with production. So production at the venue, how do they work with, do they work with a production manager then on the touring side too? Is it basically they just mirror their job? Yeah, so their job's mirrored. So, um, you know, this is like a really good subject because I had a buddy that was looking to come off tour and I was like, hey, come work at the venue. And he was like, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, mm -hmm. no way. And he was touring with A-list artists and I was like, you know what you're doing. You're a vet man or you're a tour manager for A-list artists. Like, come on, like you'll hit the ground running. Um, and that kind of made me realize that like people don't really, they think the venue world's completely different and it's not, it, it's mirrored the tour and you have to speak the same language as the tour. So production managers working with the tour, you know, if you've been on tour, you know that the bus, the people that are on the bus are usually, you have like a head lighting guy, a head audio guy. You have a, you know, A1, maybe A2. You have guitar techs and kind of everything backline specific that's very specific to the band. But if you look at what goes into building a show, not one or two people are building that entire rig and flying it. So they, those guys roll in, the production team rolls in on the tour side and they know their... Uh, department very well and they will work with us our production manager and um, our uh, heads for our local union to actually build everything so the touring uh, lighting guy he knows how his rig is built he's not going to build it he's going to tell his production manager hey i'm going to need 30 guys to help me build this rig that production manager speaks to us tells our production manager he needs 30 guys we talk to the union union brings 30 guys in so that the rig gets built and that guy's kind of from the tour is kind of over, standing over and working hand in hand with uh, the local union's uh, head and saying, hey, have your guys do this, have them do this, build it this way. We need to run the audio this way. And then us as a production manager, you know, on the production side, maybe they're trying to put their front of house in an area that doesn't work with our seating arrangement or it doesn't. Uh, um, they're managing the production from make it fit within the venue. Um, you know, making sure we keep our fire lanes straight, making sure that we rent forklifts if we need forklifts and gas for all the pyro and coordinating permits for different aspects of the show. So 
again, a lot of bleed over there, right? You could be on tour and you could be uh, a drum tech who has a great understanding of production and uh, what it takes to put a show on and like to bleed that into a production manager at a venue. Like you are then you understand how a show gets built. You understand how it gets put away and it kind of gives that hand. You don't have to be high level touring personnel to apply it to a, to a venue specific job. Before you go any further, I want to just piece that together because I feel like, well, you're really good at this. And you know it very well, but for somebody like me or anybody who's listening, it's a lot to take in. And I was trying to like figure out a way to kind of, and maybe people make fun of me. Maybe it's not a lot to take in. Maybe it's just me, but I was trying to think. So basically everybody, it's kind of like, like a tree or like roots, right? You, everybody has like their top level person and then it branches out to everybody below. And I was thinking as you're talking, like, why do we need a specific person for everything? And when you're talking about permits, it made sense. You almost need like a specialist that understands their world so well that all the answers you need are one question away from this like master person. So the managers on each side can ask and communicate and get, you know, Hey, I want to do this here. Okay. You can do that there, but there's a fire permit. Okay, cool. I can do that there. All right. Tell your people, go do it rather than if they weren't, you know, masters of their area, this just wouldn't work. Right. It just right. would take too long. If they were like, Hey, want to build this here? They're like, okay. Um, we have to go talk to people. I think we need to figure that out. Like it can't be phone calls and emails all day. It has to be all advanced ahead of time. So the day of they can do all this stuff so quick and it's not quick. I mean, it takes a day, but it's a lot of quick hundreds, thousands of things happening quickly that are complicated. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work to do in that one day. And there's a large expense associated with that work in that day. So if you don't have your shit together before the load in starts and you find yourself in a position where, Oh no, like the seating riser is where it's not supposed to be. And that's going to cost us two to three hours of time before we could adjust and do it correctly. Well, that's, that's freaking ten thousand dollars out the door just because of one mistake, you know. Yeah. Kind of have to think about that. The margins for touring have to be small, and we have to hold our end of the bargain to not be making this extremely expensive for the tour when they come into our venue. Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Well, let's go through another example. I mean, we've talked about production. You know, not everybody can be like, oh, I'm going to be a production manager. It's pretty, uh, it can be a complicated job. But box office, that's a little more entry level, I would say. I mean, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but. No, and every venue has a box office. So that's a great, you don't have to be at an arena to work in a box office. And it's a really great place to learn how a building works um, and how ticket sales work. And not necessarily ticket sales, but like what goes into building a show on, on the ticketing platform side of things um, and understanding, again, sight lines and, you know, crowd demographics and whatnot and how to appeal for that. We just had a show the other night where our car, crowd demographic is 80% female. So we had to, you know, switch over uh, bathrooms to accommodate so that there is enough bathrooms for 80% of the crowd. And it's our box office who, like, pays attention to that and realizes that and is like, you know, one big team that comes together and it's maybe not something that you would think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but box office is good. You could, it's a great entry level place and it's a great place to build a career. Every venue has a box office person. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're really dealing a lot with the money side of things, uh, creating the shows and, and the prices and all that good stuff. So that's a fun one to be a part of. Security is another fun one to be a part entry level. For box office, do you think you could speak, like do they work with the venue with ticket counts and like what information does a box office communicate to on a tour and uh, who? do they to communicate with just to give another example of how they talk to the tour? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, day of show, yeah, not every tour sells out and you have to dress the house or you have to rescale ticket prices. Gotta, gotta say what that, what's dress the house mean? I know. Can you explain that? Yeah. If you have a bunch of empty $1,000 front row seats and the entire upper level is full, the artist doesn't want to see, you know, half his front row empty. So you go and you bring people from worse seats into better seats uh, so that the show looks better for everybody. And 
Uh, it's one of the best parts of the job, honestly, whenever we get extra tickets to a show that's not sold out and you take somebody, I always go to the worst seats in the house and, yes. hey, you know, do you want to move? Do you want to move? And most people are like, no, man, leave me alone. I'm You're good. trying to I'm trick like, me. No. I know this. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. on an airplane before. You're about to kick me off this flight. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. And you walk them down to like, you know, fifth row and they're like losing their mind. That's, that's such a fun Closer? part. But- <laughs> Closer? It's like, yeah, that would be insane. <laughs> One more floor down. <laughs> Dressed in the house, uh, the box office deal with dressed in the house. When people show up day of show to buy tickets and, you know, all the things that go along with that, it's, it's kind of a guest services role at times because they're going to receive the uh, brunt end of it. They also do a lot with the uh, artist guest lists, the venue oh, guest yeah. lists, all, all the guest list stuff. People skills. <laughs> people skills. If you're on like the promoter level, you're doing guest lists and comp tickets. It's very... Box office works with the promoter uh, very hand in hand. And so maybe a little bit breakdown of like venue versus promoter versus tour. Venue is the building. The promoter has purchased the tour and is having it, it is putting up the money for the band to play at that specific show or that specific venue. Um, so our client at the end of the day is the promoter, even though we are doing this work on behalf of the tour the promoter mm-hmm. is the person who paid the rent for the tour to come into the building. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the specifics of that more and yeah. more. I, I like that. There's so many layers. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize that, but that's probably my own fault. I wanted to ask, <laughs> so before we got on here, you were telling me a, a cool little fact, which I, I just love these little interesting things that I didn't know about. Tell us about, this is almost, unre- well, that's related to tickets. What's it called? A drop rate? Drop count. Drop count. Can you talk about a drop count real fast? I just thought it was amazingly interesting. So Sure. So you have your total ticket sales, uh, everything that actually sold, and then you have your drop count, which is uh, how many people actually showed up, a percentage of people that showed up to the show. So drop count, a lot depends on the drop count. Some artists won't go on the stage until the drop counts at a certain uh, percentage, usually like 80%. So that goes along with like door times. Well, if you only have hour doors and you have late arriving crowd or you're on a Friday night and at six o'clock doors in the middle of LA, like it's going to be a late arriving crowd. So you're sitting there monitoring the drop count to make sure that the the, the house looks good enough and there's enough people there. Because if you start the show and 50% of the people that bought tickets aren't there, you're going to get 50% of those people wanting refunds because they missed the show, you know, yeah. even though you're starting at the ticket at time. But that's... So, I'll, yeah, drop count is cool. We usually see there's something interesting that's been happening since like Delta and everything like opening back up is uh, prior to COVID, I would say the average drop for a show would be between 82 to maybe 92%. If you get somewhere like 95%, you're like, wow, this is a really dedicated crowd. This is, people really love this person. Kanye is playing. God is playing. And I don't think we've ever seen a true 100% drop count. Just need to sell one ticket. One ticket. Capacity yeah. one for tonight. 100% drop count. Call it a night. Let's go. <laughs> and that's a little lesson. Maybe I'll give a little industry secret. There's always another ticket available. There's always a ticket yeah. somewhere available. <laughs> Yo, all right, tell me about this while we're on this subject. What is up with artists, artists will name unnamed, they're saying, all right, we're playing the forum, show sold out. But the show's not sold out. The show's capacity was just reduced to the amount of tickets they sold. What is that? Is that a thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but like people want to play a sold out show. What is going on? And if you can't talk about this, that's fine. But what what is that? So the what really happens with that is a ticket a show is billed. So we are talking about uh, the the stage positioning, how many tickets are available. Um, When the the show goes under contract, they'll say that it's a fourteen thousand person event. And if you expand more than that and you don't sell all those out, you're still a sold out show because you sold out your capacity. So your capacity uh, at on sale, when you go on sale, you could sell that out and you know maybe there's still 200 tickets available. Oftentimes it has to do with like deal memos and once you get that sold out spot is when an artist collects a larger percentage of ticket revenue. Um, okay. So there's a lot of, there's like politics that go behind it, a lot of different stuff. Business. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I mean, it seems like I'm sure there's a downside to doing it this way, but it seems like then you would just say your sell out points. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Yeah, your sell-out points as low as possible. So you're like, okay, sold out at 100 tickets. Now these other 10,000 are just, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's rules against that, but I'm saying like people do that maybe to not an extreme level, and that makes sense because nobody's gonna be like, you know, 
this band sold out the forum, that means like most people would be like, oh, that means they sold 17,000 tickets. But most people just see the sold out. They don't see like, hey, that was actually 5,000 5, tickets and they cut the exactly. venue in half. And they like, what are those called when you hang the huge black things over some of the seats? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like the Yeah, duvetine when you black them out, yeah. Yeah, they're like blackout seats. It's like, all right, guys, you're fudging the numbers, but hey, that's the business, right? You got to fake until you make it sometimes. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. All right. Thanks yeah. for letting me just ask some questions that I wanted to ask. I love it. Okay, cool. So that was the facilities department. We'll talk more in specific about what all these jobs do uh, in our next episode, but let's go to the live department. And this is, as you were describing it, this is, you explain it. What are these, what does this group do again? They're doing a lot of the promo work for the show. So booking, marketing, sponsorship, finance, premium seating, VIP, artist relations. So these are the people who, for instance, artist relations, that's the person that's taking care of and doing their due diligence uh, at the forum. We like to give gifts. Yeah, let's talk and, about uh, them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you know, sometimes uh, artists are very specific. Sometimes they could care less about anything in the world. Uh, for us, our venue has its own kind of uh, rules associated with it when it comes to backstage. So our artist relations person is, um, you know, doing the research to give the artists their special gifts. We do, we like to do a lot of things like, uh, custom made, uh, clothing or shoes or, uh, cool. art pieces and whatnot. Skateboards. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, one thing to just like give somebody that you can get at the shop and we have somebody that does a lot of really good job at digging deep and getting some really unique, special gifts, whether it be a very special candle or, you know, custom made shoes, anything like that. Do you have any examples you can share with us? I know that this is sometimes privileged information that, you know, it's not, but do you have any like cool examples yeah. that would be allowed um, to be public? Yeah. Bruno Mars, I think posted his, we made him a custom pair of shoes, a uh, custom oh, cool. painted pair of shoes. And he posted those, I believe. And then neon signs, we let, neon signs are always a good, good, something kind of a memorabilia. It's like, we like to give stuff that the artist could take home and, and be like, Hey, I played the forum and I got that at the forum. Yeah. When you're, when you're an artist and you're to a level where you're playing the forum, you're probably also to a level in life where money is not, is, is an endless commodity. And often I think those people value things that are, you know, special and they, yeah. they're sentimental and you can't buy them just with money. And a custom pair of shoes or a neon sign that was made for you by a venue you played a, it probably doesn't get more special than that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's a really cool job. Um, that's kind of like the booking side of things. Our VIP, we have a large emphasis on VIP at the forum um, because we are in LA. So every tour kind of says like, oh, it's going to be a crazy night. We have so many special guests, but oh, this is LA. You're used to it. And we very much are used to it. We yeah. have, if you guys know about the forum club, private invite only club. And, you know, that's kind of the who's who of the industry um, from the promoter side, the agent side, booking side, and ven different venue partners, different touring partners, friends of friends of the band and, you know, celebrities and whatnot. So we kind of have a, a a little bit of a unique aspect when it comes to the forum club, but we have somebody any, almost venues will take, have a VIP department that takes care of ticket requests and, um, uh, just VIP stuff, you know, whether it be uh, meet and greets, um, or any of that stuff, anything VIP. And that's a really good way. A lot of my friends who tour and use the venue as a place between tours so that they have a gig and they are staying involved in the industry and making the right connections. Uh, VIP is a really good spot for that because it's kind of, there's a lot of jobs associated with uh, the VIP side that are uh, show day stuff, show event related. So, you know, and you could leave and go on tour and do your stuff on tour and come back home and still have a job for the events. Um, so that's a, that's a, a nice one for people who kind of maybe thinking of the local venue a little differently after this conversation of like, it's a great place. Well, thank you for giving like an overview of kind of what exists at a venue. I know we kind of went all over the place, but you know, there's just so much to cover and I get interested in little things and you remember stuff that you want to talk about. And we're just, it's just madness. And I love it. I love all yeah. the things that we talked about. So I think actually as abrupt as it might be, that pretty much, that's pretty much good for, I think the first episode of this. And just to recap the next episode, we're going to go a little more deep on what these jobs are and what the skills you need to do them are so that if you're coming from touring or from not touring and you want to work at a venue, we'll talk to you about how you can work there what you need to, you know, what skills you need to have and what department you could kind of go into and what these jobs do. But 
Joey, first, is there anything else you want to add to this that we didn't cover? Oh, man, there's so much. We I could clearly, uh, as you can see, I could talk about this stuff forever. Dude, well, like, I mean, like, before this, I'm sure there was a ton of things going through your head. Is there anything you just want to say that you're like, also, this is cool, or this is a fun fact? Because I'm all ears. I, I just love learning. So if there's anything that doesn't creep into what we're going to do next episode that you think we should talk about? Sure. So, okay. So I think when you're on the road, you hear a lot of the old timers be like, Oh, the fucking local guys, you know, the locals fucked oh, up. Oh yeah. I've heard that. Ca- right. So yeah, yeah. you get a kind of this uh, perceived connotation of, of what it is to be a local guy. You're like too dumb to go on tour or, or, or like, you know, you just signed on to the job today. They're projecting. Like, yeah. <laughs> But um, for me, I really enjoyed touring and I loved it. And I kind of said this a little earlier. I couldn't take the mental toll that touring put on me. I had uh, a focus in life of that. I didn't see touring being able to give me the type of lifestyle that I needed to be healthy um, mentally, physically. That's fair. The venue was a really great way to take all of my passion and skills and uh, take it to a place where, you know, I've lived in the same building and the same house for six years now, which is like because I'm not always on the road and looking to get rid of my apartment and stressed about like, Oh, I have too much stuff. I'm going to have to put it into storage. You know, I have <laughs> hobbies and stuff. Like I, I love, I rebuild cars. You're and a I, human uh, being. You have yeah, a life. <laughs> exactly. So, to, so venue local work has been a great way to exercise all my brain muscles that it takes to do touring. Um, but I get to come home at night and sleep in my bed, you know, nourish the relationships I have at, in my home, in my personal life. And I don't really get the, for me, touring post tour depression, man, it took me out every single tour. Oh and my God. To, yeah. To the tour, to the point where I was like, okay, I can't do this again. It's, it's like, it really took me out. So it was a great workaround. I was going to say, it reminds me of for people who haven't toured. It's the feeling of when you break up with somebody and you're like, dude, I don't think I could ever date somebody again because yeah. this sucks so much. Yeah. And then you, you do it again Yeah. and again, but you just know you're going to break up with this person at the end of the tour. Like, you know, it's ending. It's not like, oh, maybe I'll marry them. No, there's, yeah. there isn't that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for me, it was like, you're so needed on a tour and you have a task and you have a job and you're important enough to be on that tour. And then you have your friends and your family. And it's like, it's not only just breaking up with somebody, it's breaking up with 10 people or eight people and people that you fucking love and you get really close to. And you go from one day being up all night doing the, doing the tour thing. And the next day you wake up and it's poof, all gone. And the tour bus has left and you're at home and you're alone and you're like, who am I? What do I do? What's my meaning in life? I don't have a guitar to tune. What am I supposed to do right now? Yeah. You know? Why am I drinking coffee? I need to go to bed. Yeah. Where's catering? Just somebody tell me where catering is. Please let that be a thing still. All right. Name the movie. Poof. What do you need? Do you know oh, the movie? That's know, right? It's movie Aladdin. Guy. It's a genie. Poof. Oh, what do you need? I don't know. You said poof one. and it reminded me of it. And I was like, <laughs> poof, what do you need right away? I'll, Aladdin has some good quotes. Well, I'm happy that you kind of identified what you're you know, what you needed in life and then found the job for that because yeah, it's hard to have a balance on tour. The really, I mean, the balance is a hundred percent tour and we've talked about it so many times in this podcast. You don't really have time for family, friends. It's hard to even find brain space to call people sometimes. Of course there's, you know, different levels of touring and different ways that, you know, are more sustainable than others, but yeah. That's about it. Okay. I actually had a question from one of our Patreon members. I have a few more we'll ask the next episode, but I thought this one was relevant for this episode. This is from Carolyn. What can we do speaking as like a touring act as a, to help them at the venue, like help them do their job better or be better for them. And on the other side, what is something that they should not do that makes your job a lot harder? Those kind of, those can kind of be the same thing, right? You should do this, meaning you also shouldn't do the opposite of this. So, you know, yeah, you know, as a tour, like as a venue person, I know the venue and what can and can't be done. And I don't come in to your tour and be like, you should change your tour because you're at this venue. So the short answer to that is like, if trust me, don't be a dick. Don't, I don't know be my a dick. shit. <laughs> I know that you can't put the stage over there. Yeah. Don't tell me you want to put it over there because it's just going to make this hard. I promise you, I'm not lying to you. I have no personal investment. I don't in care this. where the stage goes. It's not me personally telling you, you cannot put the stage there. Yeah. It's the fire marshal. That's not going to let you open yeah. the doors. If you put the stage there. Um, no, I, I, I think just like 
some people are like, this is how we do it every single time. And there's no, no uh, room for adjustment. And that's just like in anything is not really a good uh, way to step into things. Like every building is different. Every building's like uh, capacities of what they're able to do and not do. And their staffing is different, but being kind, like there's nothing better than seeing like a tour roll in and you're going into catering for breakfast and people are saying hello. And, and, you know, on our end, like we totally get it. You just got off the bus. That's, you know, you were up till two in the morning the night before you just rolled in. You really don't want to talk to anybody. You have a long day ahead of you, but it's, it's definitely a team effort. And uh, on our end, at least with our building, we always come to like, how can we help you instead of like, you're an intrusion in our building. Um, so I think if you kind of have the, just the same mentality, it's like, Hey partner, you know, we're partners for the day. What can we do to get the, we all have the same end goal is get the show seen by people and ex- like, provide a once in a lifetime experience. So like whatever I could do to help you. And if I need, you know, you, you to be a little bit flexible, then if you can be flexible then great, um, if you can't, then let's figure out how to work it your way. <laughs> hey, I like that. I, you know, I'm really happy that you hit me up to do this. And, and I just want to say like, if anybody has an idea for an episode and is qualified in the music industry, hit me up because I have friends, but I only have so many friends and you know, I'm all, I gotta learn, I gotta meet new people and it's COVID. So you, you gotta connect online. And so <laughs> Joey actually hit me up just being like, Hey, this is what I do. Uh, I would love to come on the podcast. And you know, we had a call and wrote this episode together and I'm really excited to have him here. So just thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah, man, of course. Once, not once, but twice. We're into two episodes. Yeah. That's a commitment, my guy. I- I never, never had any kind of like in when it came to touring or when it came to this industry. And I I know a lot of people think it's like who, you know, and I had a lot of people that lent a hand to me. And so I'm always willing to lend a hand. And if I could speak on a podcast for a little bit and inspire somebody, or if somebody wants to reach out to me and has a question or whatever, I'm, I, I love helping the live entertainment industry grow and, and get bigger. And I definitely don't like the mentality of it's like a closed door, a hard floor to get in. And, you know, it's like, no, come on in. Let's have fun. Like learn a thing or two. No. Yeah. But really seriously, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for doing this. We will see you guys again next week. If you have any questions, you can always hit us up on Instagram, whatever. We're here to answer your questions, help you guys out. We want to get you on the road, but more importantly, we just want to get you involved in the music industry because it's an amazing place to work.